Welcome to our video on introduction to module four, normal distribution. This is where I'll be talking about just the just of uh, what a normal distribution is, what's the difference between the normal distribution and the previous chapter module discrete or let's say binomial probability distribution and how you calculate probabilities in this module. Now, the good news is this is the last module in which you'll be asked to calculate probabilities, and it's just a new way of calculating probabilities that you couldn't do using normal uh, binomial distribution. Now, uh, we have two kinds of experiments. We have uh, experiments where you can count the number of outcomes and experiments that you cannot count the number of outcomes. For example, if we're talking about the number of left-handed students in a classroom, in a classroom of size 10, that's a nice number to always use. Then if I told you what is the total different number of left-handed people you can have in this class, you could say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. So any one of these numbers could represent the number of left-handed people in a class of size 10. So there are 11 such items. It's always one more because of that zero. Now, but if I said uh, my experiment is, I don't know, let's say my experiment is IQs in a population. And if I want to talk about IQs less than 120, and I turned around and said, okay, why don't you list all the IQs that are less than 120? You wouldn't be able to do it because, you know, you can't say 119 because I could say, how about 119.5? Or I could say 119.8 and, and I just continue. So there's like, like, there's like infinitely many outcomes that will be less than 120. So it wouldn't, you couldn't do it. I mean, how do you work with here in a binomial, I mean, in a discrete environment, which was module three, you're only dealing with 11 such probabilities. So you calculate them as you noticed and you just use them. You added this many of them. You added that many of them to answer the probability questions. But you couldn't do that if you have trillions and trillions of outcomes. So how do you, how do you calculate probabilities in that scenario? Well, what's going to happen in this new module, guys, is that we're going to leave alone all the formulas and all the calculations. And we're basically just going to focus on the normal bell-shaped curve. And we're gonna calculate all the probabilities based on that. So if, for example, I wanna ask you to find a probability that someone's IQ is less than 120, given that the average IQ is 100, we just trace the belly of the, the middle of the normal distribution, which is always the mean, which in this case happens to be 100. This is the x-axis and this is the probability axis. So, and this way is positive and just like the good old number line, that way goes in the negative, that means less, this side means more. So plus, that means 100 increases, so you go to 110, 120, 130, and so on. And this way, it minus, it decreases, so it goes to like 90 IQ, 80 IQ, 70 IQ, and so on. So if I said find a probability that someone's IQ is less than 120, then I'll just come to 120 IQ, I draw a line straight to the curve, and then I'll shade everything to its left, and it's always to the left, and you make it a little thicker, so you shade everything to the left, and this yellow area becomes the probability, so all you have to do is just calculate that yellow area, and you have the answer. You don't have to use any formulas, you don't have to calculate anything, it's basically a drawing, and then I'll tell you in a minute, so it's basically this drawing. So that's the area that would be the answer. So basically the area in a normal probability distribution happens to give you the probability answer. So if I could find how much that area is, then I'll be able to answer, then I'll be able to answer my question as to what's the probability that someone's IQ is less than 120. And the way you calculate this area here, the yellow area, the way you calculate this yellow area is basically either use calculus, which we're not going to use, or we're going to use a simple Excel command to calculate it. 
So, so that's all that's happening and changing from module three to module four. In module three, we used uh, the binomial formula to create all the probabilities and then answer the probability questions by adding different probabilities. Here, the way you answer the probability is to draw the picture uh, just so you, that you understand what probability you're trying to calculate and just learn what the command is in Excel that will allow you to calculate that probability. And I'll give you that command through the lecture and also on my Excel lecture on this module. I also had a file for you guys to look at uh, at the end of module three, and I made it, uh, I named it very essential for you to look at before you go to module four. But I just want to mention it again. Uh, in a normal distribution, when you find percentiles, uh, I just want you, I just want all of us to know what it means from a normal distribution point of view, because you found percentiles in module two, but you just use the percentile command, if you remember. Here, uh, percentiles are going to be calculated on the normal bell curve. They're not going to be based on a percentile command. So, for example, if we're dealing with, I'm just going to again talk about IQs. If we're dealing with IQs and the average IQ is 100, and this is the normal curve, and don't forget that's the x-axis and this is the p-axis, then if I wanted to talk about, let's say, the 90th percentile, if I wanted to talk about the 90th percentile under the normal distribution, where would it be? Well, percentiles, 90th percentile basically mean the point on this normal distribution that captures the bottom 90% or the area to its left is 90%. So obviously that point will be there somewhere and that will be the P90, which basically what it means is the area to its left is 90%. So let me again draw shade it. So basically that's what P90 means. And and here what you're wondering what is that yellow area? What the, when somebody says the 90th percentile, basically what they're trying to say is that the yellow area is 0.9 or the same thing as 90%. So P90 represents the bottom 90% of the normal distribution. And its value is a value that you're going to calculate. And I'm going to show you how to calculate it when we get to our Excel commands on how to calculate probabilities using Excel for a normal distribution. So whatever it happens to be, whatever number it turns up being, let's say 1.28 or 2.37 or, or 1.59, whatever it happens to be, that number will be the location of that number will be this point but this 90 means that 90% area to its left. So if I wanted to ask you what P10 means, forget about what, it, what the value is for P10, but what does it just mean intuitively on a normal distribution picture is you would just simply draw the normal distribution curve again. And remember this is the middle and the middle is always P50, the 50th percentile and P10 will be here, which basically means the bottom the bottom, I'm sure you've answered it already. Let me change colors, the bottom 10%. Or since we don't use percents in this class, the bottom 0.1. So that's what P10 means. If I wanted to draw P40, P40 is somewhere there. That means the bottom 40%. This will be P60. This will be P99 or whatever. So that's how the P's will propagate under a normal distribution. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next lecture for module 